between the visual and, and the story, which is not literary in the classical sense, which is not linear, but it's something that represents a crucial element in the construction mm. of the performance. But storytelling is something that, um, again, in, in our Western European tradition, I don't know, uh, for Romania, I don't know that so well, but uh, for sure in, in, in Belgium, storytelling, we, we forgot that. We, we, we forgot uh, to sing together, uh, to dance together. It's, it's, it's a bit gone in, in, in our tradition. Um, when people sing together uh, in a political way, uh, people are afraid because it's most, uh, most of the, the best things are the fascists or something, you know. So, uh, s s storytelling uh, is one of the tools I use to communicate. Um, I come also from a very fragmentary background. Um, in, in the 80s, you, you take a Shakespeare or you take, uh, you, you take fragments of books and you make a piece. It was not, the linear storytelling was out, out of order, so it, it was just always fragmentary to, to have another, to, to, to go further into the subtext of things. And what I try to do now is to have a f quite linear story that is uh, easy to follow somehow, and then to go deeper into this, the sense of the matter. In this case, in Dear House is special because I really wrote it for the, the female dancer who, who lost her brother. So the story is real, real and um, because it's a true story, I can write really on the skin of the performance. That's how I work. When I write a new play, I need first to have the ensemble, and in Need Company it's now the last 10 years the same people. Uh, so I know the people very well. I know their skills, I know the, quali the quality of them as performers, and then I write the text for them. So it's really on the skin of the actors that I write, and the skin of the actors is at that moment the skin of the world. And um, if you write so directly for them, then it becomes very personal. And because For everybody, not just for you, for everybody. It becomes personal for them. In this case, again, it's special because the dancer, uh, uh, Tizian Lotten, who was the, 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 the character who plays herself, um, had to play her own grief, which made it very, very um, intense and very emotional for her. That's why we had to replace her after the first round of shows uh, a few years ago. We, have, we had to replace her because it was too heavy. It, it, it became too personal. Um, and I learned also for that that you have to always uh, be careful that it's not too personal. But the problem is with our individuality is now the center of, of society and, and um, it is quite new in the history of theatre that um, people talk about themselves on stage. I think it was Molière who did that for the first time so directly that he, uh, I think he played a misanthrope and he was himself on stage, his wife was on stage and his mistress was on stage and the king forbid it and he was put in prison because he was playing himself. That was forbidden. So artists were servants of society and they were not allowed to talk about themselves. Uh, which is very interesting because in visual art, uh, Rembrandt and all these great painters, they privately, they were painting themselves. But they didn't show these paintings, that was private things. The, 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 open, the, the official things were the, the, the royal portraits and all that. Uh, but in the 20th century we deconstructed that. And we don't paint for the king anymore, we don't paint, paint for God anymore, so we start to paint or to talk about ourselves. Which is uh, something that I question. Should we do that and how can we universalize that? When it's, it's, it cannot become an ego trip or something. And so, uh, to work so personal as us, you need a, a story that can have a balance between this very individual approach and the universal approach. Um.